Thank you. So I'm the co-founder and chair of the Baltic Sea Action Group. Emphasis on the word action. We are aiming to make a concrete um, action for the Baltic Sea climate and biodiversity. We're an independent uh, foundation. We started the Baltic Sea work um, 12 years ago, and the whole aim is to support the ecosystem and support the ecological balance in the Baltic Sea. How does the soil actually um, relate to this? I'll tell you later. Uh, the basic problem with the Baltic Sea is that it suffers from severe eutrophication. It's one of the most polluted sea areas in the world. And like all the other water bodies next to the intensive farming, it does have too, many, too much nutrients which increase the um, algae, while the nutrients actually should be in the field. So healthy soil minimizes the nutrient emissions to the water bodies. And also mitigating the climate change, we help the Baltic Sea as the Baltic Sea suffers from the climate change and the changes that it evidently brings. Caring for the soil helps the climate biodiversity at the Baltic Sea. Why do we actually take a look at the soil? Soil has a significant potential of storing oh, carbon yes. from atmosphere. So it's not enough to cut emissions. We need to cut emissions, but it's not enough. We need to also sequester carbon. And even the small changes in the soil carbon amount do have a significant effort because there's already more carbon in the soil than in the atmosphere and plants combined. So healthy soil secures better yields. This is obvious for the farmers, as we will hear later on today, but also minimizes emissions to the water bodies. And of all the biodiversity of the Earth, 25% is in the soil. And as we all know, the climate change goes hand in hand with the biodiversity crisis. So we need to solve water, water uh, soil, uh, biodiversity, and climate together. So this is why we have started the carbon action a few years ago. What we're actually doing is a paradigm shift from degenerative farming to regenerative farming. Being sustainable is not enough anymore. The crisis is too deep. So we need to actually shift the paradigm. And how do we do that? We have the regenerative agriculture, which is actually, you can read it from here, um, regenerating the nature while we're producing food. Now we take a look at the soil and the carbon, but it regenerates the nature in, in total. But here we focus on the soil health and the carbon amount. And this is from my own farm. Um, those who have fields actually have the possibility to solve questions and to be part of the solution rather than part of the problem. This is when we started the um, scientific uh, experiences in our farm. The soil was very uh, poor and in bad condition, as you can see from the left picture. and. Um, on the right hand side, you can see what happened in two years when we had the good soil amendments and treatments for the soil. So it is possible to improve the health of the soil, even quite fast, if I would say. To scale up the carbon action, we have a platform which is um, very scientific and uh, science-based, science but we need, for the paradigm shift, we need to have decision makers, farmers and companies like today, you will hear all of these what we're doing and how can we actually make the paradigm shift together. We need to have everyone aboard. Science, Jari Liske will present it today. It's a very uh, multidisciplinary platform, a network of researchers. You can see how many institutes and different uh, universities we have there. And it's open for everyone, as science, science naturally is. So we are focusing on soil and plant processes, farming practices, and verification of the soil, uh, amount of carbon in the soil. So in order to have steering methods, we need to have verification. And of course, we take a look at the economics as well. Business platform will be presented today by Valio. And uh, in order to make any change in the society, we need to have business on board. And these different actors and different food chain companies are really committed to work with us. 
you will hear Juha talking about today. And last but not least, carbon atom farms. We cannot make any paradigm shift or do anything with farming without actual real farmers. We have over 100 farmers which uh, participate to the carbon action and uh, we got the 100 farmers very fast. We actually had, we had to say even no to someone who wanted to join us, but in order to scale up this we have carbon action club which is open to everyone. But these 100 farmers are also scientific example farmers. So we also identified some bottlenecks in order to um, educate the farmers. We need to have very good agricultural advisors and we have a specific program for the agricultural advisors, how we can train them to be experts in soil health and carbon. Very good carbon farmer, also one educator will be speaking today, Juuso Joona. So please stay online. And how to scale up what we're doing actually. We have a very big aim of biodiversity, carbon in the soil, Baltic Sea and climate crisis. But how to scale up? Well, this is how we've done it. We had the first 100 pilot farms. Then we have the Carbon Action Club, which has many, many farmers already. Then we have a company platforms. And companies also bring farmers to the education. And then we will be doing an online course of uh, regenerative farming and carbon farming so that everyone who wants to have the information and wants to get education of the topic can join us. And of course, we started in Finland. Finland is a very good country to have a pilot example of the just systemic change. So I know that we have only 2 million hectares of field and it's enough. It's not enough to tackle the climate change, but it is enough to show the case of systemic change and be the example that can inspire other ones. And this is the online course which we are building of the regenerative carbon farming for farmers and consumers as well. With world-class digital learning experts, we have a very good uh, partner with us. I hope everyone will take this course and, and get the basic idea of regenerative farming. Now I will leave some time for the questions, if there's any. And if not, I think we are going forward with the program. And you can see the um, contact information. Please contact us if you have any ideas later on how to support this work or be part of the change. Yes, thank you, Sara, for the very clear presentation. There has been some discussion. You mentioned the bottlenecks. But could you still emphasize that it's very important, of course, when you think about the systemic change and about a scaling action to identify the bottlenecks and how do you tackle them? Yes, um, it's, very, it's very hard work. It's mm. concrete work. If we notice that we have to train farmers, then we need to identify the who trains the farmers. And of course, then it's the agricultural advisors. And that's how we tackled one bottleneck. If we want to have a really big impact in society, we need to have companies and we can identify big food companies which we need to have on board. And if we have something in science, then we also can start something which is focusing directly. So it's, it's hard work, it's step by step working towards that. But we try to have action underlined because I think we have enough papers and, and uh, roadmaps in the world. And of course, if we uh, talk about bottle next, then we have the policy. Is it steering the chains? That's the biggest steering method, or should be. Um, the present decisions of, of the common agricultural policy might not steer the chains as strongly as we would have hoped. But then again, we have farmers already doing the chains, so we have to show with the example what we can do. Thank you, Sara. And we would have uh, Elsie. I think we didn't have okay. more questions. We can go on with the program. Yes, here Thank you can you, see Sarah. some of the uh, cooperating partners and founders of the Carbon Action Platform. It's a huge platform, platform having different kind of funding. So thanks to everyone. Yes, indeed. Thank you for, for the funders. 
And uh, we would hear, of course, hear more about the agricultural policy from Elsie Katainen. But I think we now continue with the program and we take Elsie online a little bit later. So as Sara mentioned, science is at the core. Science is very important for this carbon action. And I'm happy that we have here now Pro research professor Jari Liski from the Finnish Meteorological Institute, because he's leading the scientific work in carbon action. So he's going to tell us now how to verify the soil carbon. Please, Jari. Thank you, Laura, and good morning, everybody. A very important part of the research that we do in carbon action is to develop a verification methodology for the impacts of carbon farming and this regenerative farming. In order to reach the climate targets, whether it's internationally, globally or nationally, we need to cut the emissions fast, but that's not enough. In addition, we have to find ways to remove carbon dioxide already in the atmosphere, and globally, we need to have more than uh, 10 billion tons of carbon dioxide removals per year. Uh, all the removal methods which have, which cost less than 100 US dollars per ton of carbon dioxide are uh, land-based, based on carbon sequestration in land ecosystems. And the, uh, all the other methods are estimated to remain more expensive than that during the coming decades. So this G here stands for soil carbon sequestration. And if you remember, we were looking for carbon removals of uh, 10 billion tons per year. So the soil carbon cannot do that all alone, but it, I think, will be an important uh, uh, component of the carbon removal systems in the future. So that means that there is and there will be a lot to measure, report and verify in the future regarding soil carbon sequestration. Well then, how it is possible to uh, quantify the carbon farming of these better farm carbon farming methods? Uh, one possibility is to measure the exchange of carbon dioxide between the field and the atmosphere continuously using a so-called uh, decovariance methodology. Uh, this is an example of uh, taking those eddy coverage measurements at an agricultural grassland site in southern Finland over a two-year period. We uh, will see so below the, the uh, on the negative uh, values below the zero axis, we see, see that the photosynthesis of the grass vegetation removes uh, carbon from the atmosphere, and then above the axis, the gray area denotes the respiration of plants and uh, soil microbes, which releases carbon dioxide back to the atmosphere. The dark blue denotes the difference between these two, so that is the net carbon sequestration of this field when it's below the uh, zero line, the negative value. And the uh, red cumulative curve shows that this field has uh, stored or removed about two tons of carbon per hectare uh, during this two-year period from the atmosphere. But we can't install these uh, measurement equipment on every field, and alone they do not, uh, they cannot tell for how long this carbon will stay in the soil and in the field. Another possibility to uh, quantify the carbon sequestration of fields is to take uh, soil samples, repeat the sampling, and then to calculate the soil carbon sequestration as a difference between two, these two uh, measurement occasions. Such data. Uh, are available, and for this is an example of a study field of Swedish Agricultural University showing an accumulation of carbon in the soil of this field with straw and, and nitrogen fertilization over a about a 40 year period. Uh, but taking these samples, it is expensive, and again, alone, they do not tell for how long this carbon will stay in the soil. So, as one of our researchers puts it, you cannot measure everything, everywhere, all the time, and you cannot take measurements of the future yet. So, measurements alone 
are, are not do not give us the information that we need. So for this reason, uh, the this is what the kind of the scientific community is at the moment suggesting to be a, a future uh, verification system of soil carbon sequestration. Uh, it takes advantage of different methods that give us information of the soil carbon and soil carbon sequestration, and it also makes use of uh, modeling and the uh, information technology to uh, effective computing. And this is a, a methodology that we have established here uh, in Carbon Action at, and at the Finnish Meteorological Institute. The idea here is that the, uh, this system combining models and combining measurements and combining uh, like a efficient, powerful computing uh, facilities, it calculates these estimates. So the idea is that this uh, calculator system, it calculates these natural science-based estimates of carbon sequestration, and then these natural science-based estimates of soil carbon sequestration are then adjusted to meet the needs of the different uses of this information in the society. And that is what these uh, uh, red arcs uh, denote in this in this picture. But our role as a scientific goal is to, is to make the natural science-based uh, system, but, but also make sure that it gives the information that is relevant for the different uses uh, in the society. I'm now going to uh, show you an example of demonstration how this uh, uh, calculation system that we are developing and what is also uh, operational in our research uh, group is, is working. So the idea here is that the, uh, we do the calculation, we, we calculate the calculation system and test the validity of the calculation system at study sites where we have intensive measurements. So we calibrate it there and make sure that it produces reliable estimates there. Then the philosophy is that then we can uh, apply this methodology to those fields for which we have less measurements or no measurements at all and to, to carry out the calculations. So that is how we sort of extrapolate the uh, possibilities to use this methodology outside uh, our intensive study sites. And now the approach is that the, uh, well, this, this map shows that where we have these, for example, the intensive uh, measurements we have on that field, which is on the, on the top of this map, and then we are applying that on those fields which are there uh, on the lower side of, of this, this map. And this is an kind of an uh, exception that the intensive side doesn't need to be so close to the measurement, but this is our uh, uh, example. So the idea here, again, is that we calibrate the model on those sites where we have intensive measurements, and then we apply it to those fields for which we need, to, uh, need the information. And now the idea is to calculate what happens on this field if we continue business as usual farming. The purple uh, line uh, depicts that. And then we simulate another scenario of future where we apply improved carbon farming practices, and that, show, that is uh, depicted uh, by this uh, green line there. And now, what is the kind of the uh, additional carbon sequestration in this field resulting from the improved carbon farming practices is the difference between these two. And that is the kind of the carbon that is there in the market, and that is the amount of carbon that we are interested in. And this is a result of this simulation for, the, for this site. The purple here shows the, uh, the business as usual, and then the green shows the, uh, the development uh, resulting from uh, improved carbon farming. And then this uh, black line shows the difference between the, these two, showing the amount of carbon credits that have been uh, created by this improved carbon farming practice. And then you can see there is this dashed line showing that th that is the most probable value. But around this most probable value, there is a range. That is the uncertainty range, but because it's very important that we know how reliable our estimates are. And then uh, this is like a weather forecast. If you look at the weather forecast, you get the, the most probable temperature estimate, but then you also get the range, how reliable, where it may, it may vary according to statistical uncertainty. And that is what we are calculating here as well. And then uh, still further detail here is that the, without any soil measurements from this side, we get the white uncertain range. But then if we just take during the first few years of this uh, simulation or this uh, experiment, we take soil samples and measure carbon, that already decreases 
the uh, uncertainty so that it is this darker color. So th this is uh, just to illustrate how the uh, soil carbon measurements help to improve the reliability of these calculations. Well, then the final thing that I want to here uh, mention is that the, in order to illustrate the impacts of carbon farming and also to demonstrate how this, uh, this research work and these different me measurements and the modeling are related to the real world and in the practical farming and the everyday life on the farms, we have developed a field observatory. This is already available in an address uh, www.fieldobservatory.org. Uh, it's not quite finished yet, but anything, everything that's there is, is okay. Uh, and what we have done here is that we have uh, included in the field observatory our two intensive study sites, and then we have included in the system 20 of those uh, 100 carbon action farms, which Sara mentioned in her uh, talk. So then on these sites, if you click on the sites, then it's possible to follow on to online and real-time functioning of the sites. For example, uh, the carbon uh, sequestration at the intensive study sites, and then the vegetation coverage, for example, according to the latest satellite overflight of the satellite, uh, Sentinel-2 satellite. And the, then we are adding the, our carbon uh, sequestration forecasts to this field observatory, so that already during this year, we will add a 15-day carbon sequestration forecast for these sites, for these intensive study sites to this map. So, and that is the 15 days because we have better forecast available for the next 15 days. And then in next year, we will be uh, adding the kind of the uh, decades long uh, forecast of the carbon sequestration for these sites. Yes, and then I'll just finalize because that was the kind of the, what is the status of uh, our status of developing this uh, valid, uh, measurement, verification, and reporting system. So the next steps that we're doing is that we are finalizing these demonstrations and uh, like announcing the first, first version of this field observatory open. Uh, then we will work on the soil carbon sequestration forecasts and scenarios. I mentioned the 15-day forecast still during this year. And then uh, we are working on making use of various and, and and additional data types to support these calculated estimates. So when we apply modeling, it's not that we, we are, the, model, the models tell us the truth, it's that the measurements tell us how well the models inform us about the truth. Uh, then the one of the idea of this, of this platform we are developing is that it, it's uh, very well suited as, as actually it is, is, is built for so that we can include several models in the platform at the same time and use several models to, to do these calculations. And then we are working on expanding the geographical coverage. The approach is such that it's not limited to our carbon action farms, it's not limited to Finland, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it can be applied also to, to other regions. And of course, we have, uh, we, we're working as a part of an international resource community, so that is where we want to have an impact. And uh, then we are also working on the developing practical versions of this measure measurement and modeling systems, for example, together with uh, some of the companies that are participating in this carbon action platform. With this, I'll finish. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yari, for the very clear yeah. presentation. I'm looking at the questions here at the chat. And actually, there is one question, but I think it's not maybe. It could be that Sara is better to answer this one. So there is a question about uh, is holistic management a part of what you are teaching? Or is there maybe use of when he's later going to tell us about no. the farmer's perspective? Yes. Okay, but Yari, uh, it was very clear presentation. And we're all, of course, waiting for, the, for this verification system. And you can see the great potential for this system, but I think it was very clear presentation. Maybe we have some questions at the end, but okay. we can now continue with the program. Thank yeah. you. Thanks again. Thank you. Uh, so we are now continuing with the, are we taking? So great. Now we have solved, hopefully, technical problems. So we are able to take Elsie Katainen online. And okay. I've been here all the time. We keep, keep, keep you in suspense with Elsie's presentation because we are still 
uh, solving problems. But now we continue with the farmer's perspective, as has been emphasized also in Sara's presentation, of course, uh, the carbon action is very farmer-based, uh, what we are doing. Uh, so we now consider about farmer's perspective. Yusa Joona, he's a regenerative farmer from Tyrena Farm. Tyrena Farm is also a carbon action farm. And Yusa is also an advisor in carbon action. He has many roles here. And he will tell us about carbon farming practices and also give us a farmer's message for the common agricultural policy. Please, Yusa. Good morning, everyone. I am one of the hundreds of carbon farmers in Finland uh, and an educator in region with carbon farming. And in next uh, water hour, I will take you into the practice of carbon farming and also scratch uh, agricultural policy a little. In a carbon action pilot, uh, there is 100 carbon farmers that are educated uh, by soil advisors and soil scientists. Farmers are learning from their peers in uh, small groups and applying their learnings to practice in their farms. Uh, this is a great example of farmer-led research where farmers are participating uh, in study design. In the trial setup, uh, farmers has a three hectare field divided into a trial plot and a control pl plot. And in a trial plot, uh, they are adopting one chosen carbon farming measure and in, in a control plot, continuing uh, as usual. Uh, because of a tight research setup, an interesting uh, observation has been made that farmers are applying and stacking several uh, carbon farming measures uh, in the farm outside the trial plot and leading uh, actually higher carbon sequestration outside the trial. Uh, and that is of course a positive and very motivating for farmers. And in addi addition, uh, 20 farms uh, is intensive research carried out to understand soil carbon dynamic and gather data uh, for model development like Yari just told. Interest among uh, farmers and also in public has been enormous, so we put up a carbon action club. Uh, it's open for everyone interested in carbon farming and in the club uh, experts and carbon farmers are sharing their knowledge in an understandable way. Carbon and regenerative farming uh, can be described by these main, by these three main principles. Maximizing land growth means uh, maximizing photosynthesis in, in a place and time. And it's made by healthy plants, uh, healthy diverse crops, uh, with high leaf area throughout the year, even and especially now after the harvest season. Microbes are uh, maximized through uh, plant root exudates, like I just told, and uh, also feeding them uh, with uh, decomposable organic material like uh, organic fertilization or soil improvement. And maximizing cover means minimizing disturbance both uh, mechanical and uh, chemical, meaning uh, minimizing tilts and minimizing uh, pesticides. Uh, to simplify even more, plants and microbes, microbes sequestrate the carbon. According to current understanding, uh, long-lasting soil carbon consists of uh, enthombed microbes. Uh, so, yeah. keys take care of soil health and microbial diversity and activity in soil. 
This picture is uh, from my uh, carbon action trial plot where we do trial uh, continuous scrub cover uh, versus uh, conventional plowing. And I already do see the results. Uh, more in practice, carbon farming looks like this. Most of these examples are also from our farm, uh, which is actually located in southeastern Finland. Uh, and uh, carbon farming, it's diverse crop rotations with uh, annual and perennial crops, spring zone and winter zone crops, uh, mixed and multi species crops, cover crops, so reverse style system. In, in, in way. Uh, it is balanced fertilizing, uh, organic fertilization, uh, organic soil improvement, and uh, carbon farming is minimum tillage. Uh, in this picture, in the middle, uh, the right side, you see a uh, terminating uh, perennial lay uh, with minimum tillage methods. Even that is possible uh, on our clay, so clay soils. So plowing is not needed. Uh, carbon farming is agroforestry. This picture below, uh, that's from the Stephen Briggs farm from the UK. Uh, uh, agroforestry is also in small small scale adopted in Finland. Uh, in the middle, in the low, that's direct drilling from our ongoing trials. And on uh, the corner, uh, carbon farming is also integrating animals, especially ruminants, and uh, especially rotational grazing, like here. Uh, that is from one of our carbon farmers, Jonny Jahkola. So you see that carbon farming is a very holistic approach uh, to farming, like there was a question already. Um, and in harmony with nature, not against it. Uh, with these practices, I and many of my colleagues have already achieved uh, better pro productivity and profitability comparing to input intensive conventional farming. So it really works. Uh, as it best, as it, it's best, uh, carbon farming is multi beneficial for the farmer, for the environment and for the society. Uh, this practice can improve productivity, decrease emissions, and ensure uh, the food production in a changing climate. Nevertheless, in, in a bad economical situation, uh, farmers are cautious with changes and investments. Uh, and to adapt carbon farming, farmers need incentives to invest in knowledge and technology. Uh, this should be supported by common agricultural policy, uh, for example, through eco schemes and advisory. Other income for carbon farming can come from the carbon markets. But in this case, there is anyway a requirement of additionality. Uh, this means that carbon sequestration should happen only as a result uh, of a payment. Having mentioned the multi beneficiality uh, of the carbon farming, the additionality can be ambiguous. Uh, this can be tackled by setting the baseline, the level uh, of soil organic carbon, uh, where other benefits decrease. Uh, this is a bit complicated, but I, I guess we will come to this discuss later. Having said that, uh, supporting carbon farming through CAP and market, uh, they don't have to clash. It's possible to suit them together. As a farmer and also a taxpayer, I would like to have seen more climate and environmental ambition uh, on Parliament's decisions on uh, CAP borders last week. I see direct payments capitalizing uh, in the price of arable land and passivating farmers to ignore soil health, their most valuable resource. More ambitious conditionality, result based approach, and incentivizing farmers recent farming would ensure the opportunities for future farmers. Now it is crucial to ring fence funding for eco schemes and make sure the measures suggested in member states' strategic plans are sufficient 
they are mildly beneficial and effective. Derogation should not be allowed even to the strong pillar too. In this picture, uh, you can see uh, how soil health and aggregate stability affects runoff water quality. Uh, on the left side, you see a soil sample from uh, annual crops monoculture with bad soil health, uh, leading runoff and particles and phosphorus and nutrient runoff and also carbon runoff. Uh, on the right side, there's a clear water <coughs> from a uh, soil sample from a uh, healthy soil from a uh, uh, diverse crop rotation field. A concrete example of carbon farming measure suitable for common agricultural policy, uh, especially eco scheme, is continuous uh, crop cover, uh, in particular when it was removed from, from continuous nullity. Uh, continuous crop cover out of the harvest season uh, is easily adapted and produces several benefits. It can be carried out by cover crops uh, with grass lays or winter crops. So several possibilities. Uh, and continuous crop cover is especially important uh, for soil and water courses in changing climate and rainy winters, what we have seen lately. Uh, <coughs> in this picture you see uh, our, our cereal rye with some uh, buckwheat as a companion crop. Looking good. And as an environmental measure, continuous cover cropping can be implemented through result-based where controlling can be carried out cost effectively by Sentinel 2 satellite. Sentinel 2 uh, satellite runs uh, over two times per week uh, <coughs> and um, results in uh, 10 by 10 grid uh, big picture images which we, uh, can be filtered with, with dif different tools. Here you see a, <coughs> a crop cover filter utilized. And these uh, images are uh, two weeks ago. Uh, of course, clouds are disturbing uh, imaging, but uh, this was a uh, clear day. Uh, and these yellow and, and green uh, colors means uh, crop cover uh, with uh, lay or cover crops or winter crops, and they are from our farm. And this uh, plowed bare soil, red one, is from neighboring farm. So very clear differences, easy to uh, control. And in, in this possible measure, a precise cover index for a certain period could be set. And that could be controlled by Sentinel. And this represents a result-based approach of subsidies uh, that has been com Commission's will uh, and can also be effective and simple for the farmer. Other common uh, farming elements to support are, for example, uh, crop rotation, which should be taken account in continuity, and, for example, recycling of organic materials and nutrients, uh, and biodiversity measures, which can be in, in the incentivized uh, true blood to measures. Since the Green Re Revolution, uh, farming has heavily leaned on chemical inputs, and soil health has been ignored. Now it's last goal to get into region farming. Uh, farmers are really keen uh, to learn, because many of them are facing problems with profitability and management of farming due to the climate change. Uh, as a farmer, I would really like to see a paradigm shift in agriculture and its policy at least uh, signs of it. Uh, we should consider what kind of a message common agricultural policy is delivering for the farmers who are planning their future in a changing environment. Thank you for your interest. I'm open to your questions. Yes. Thank you, Yusuf, for a very clear presentation. As we had earlier a question about holistic management, would you like to tackle that question? Yeah, I'd like to. Um, 
Carbon farming and recent farming is very a uh, holistic approach to farming. It's uh, about finding the limiting factors and tackling them uh, one by one, and uh, by that uh, solving the soil problems, for example. It all starts from the soil. We have a, <laughs> a sample Finish with us, soil. of course, and you can, uh, for example, control soil health by ha having a test like this. It's good. It's good. Great, thank you. And then uh, I, I go to the Twitter because we have good discussion going on Twitter. I think Emilia Hannula is raising a good question that she has learned in EU project. Is that different soil improving cropping systems are relevant needed in different parts of Europe and farmers in different parts have different problems and hence need different solutions? Well, I agree. Uh, that is through different solutions and that that um, like I gave you an example of uh, a cover cropping which is a result based approach to uh, supporting farming so uh, in, instead of management and measure based uh, subsidizing like like we we've done many thus far uh, it would be more effective to have result based approach so to set the targets for the farms and then they can find the solutions suitable for their uh, environment and for their farm, for their conditions. And those three main principles I uh, presented of, of the recent farming and carbon farming are very suitable for uh, every situation mm -hmm. and by maximizing uh, photosynthesis microbes and, and uh, uh, minimizing disturbance and utilizing them would be relevant. And then we have very specific questions. What are the actual results you have seen in increase of SOM, soil organic matter? Of course, the changes in uh, soil carbon storage are very slow. Uh, but at first, farmers, including me, we know this when we uh, uh, apply carbon farming methods, improved soil health by uh, uh, better nutrient and water, water holding capacity, for example, uh, better aggregate stability, less runoff, uh, better workability, uh, uh, and s several, they are stacking, and, and when we uh, apply different methods uh, and different soils, it, it really is, is seen by uh, an eye, and like we see from the soil sample as well. And like last winter, yeah. when here in Finland, it was raining water yeah. throughout the winter. In yeah, it was the very clearly uh, observed in last spring, those fields that were uh, crop covered mm -hmm. were much more easily uh, wor worked and cultivated in, in spring r than those that were bare, bare soil. Uh, in, in Finland we do still have some frost left which helps a lot of workability of the clay soils but that's not common in southern Europe and also missing in, in here I up, up here in, in future so we cannot rely on, on the frost so crop cover is very Easy method. And I still, because it's such an excellent question, I still take mm. one. Does carbon farming require specific investments or equipment? Uh, well, not really, of course, some of them, for example, to minimum tillage or some, some cultivating methods. It's mainly investing on knowledge and expertise. Uh, that's the main thing. And with uh, equipment, uh, uh, cooperation with, with the farmers is very uh, recommendable. Uh, to, to use. Thank you. I think then we can continue discussion yes. later. And thank you. There are very good active discussion now on the chat. But now yeah. I think uh, we have the time to take Elsie Katainen online. Isn't it so? I'm looking for the technical. Great. So now I think it's a good time for Elsie to respond to the farmer's perspective. Okay, does okay, Elsie hear, hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Great. Great. Can you hear me and can you see me? <laughs> can you hear me and see me? Yes. 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 Can I start? start yes, now? please. Go ahead. Good. Well, good morning and and <laughs> welcome to this seminar. On my behalf, we have got 
all the time and all the morning some technical problems. But we can start now. Uh, thank you. Thank you for joining, joining us. Um, uh, I'm glad to host uh, host uh, this event together with my colleague Jette Gutteland in cooperation with, with Baltic Sea Action Group uh, and in the field of uh, European agriculture policy, have, we have busy times behind and also ahead of us. European institutions uh, will soon start the trilogue negotiations regarding the new reform on common agricultural policy. Uh, and soon we will have new legislative initiatives coming from the Green Deal, including farm to fork strategy as well as biodiversity strategy. This will uh, all have a strong effect on how European agriculture will look like in next decades. First, I'd like to shortly summarize our last week's highly anticipated vote on the CAP. As a vice president of ACRI committee, I am content that we were finally able to vote and agree on this huge package despite the restrictions caused by the pandemic. And now we are ready to take the final steps and hopefully finalize the reform in time before the already agreed two year transitional period runs out. I'm proud that Parliament managed to find a balanced compromise on CAP, which secures more sustainable and profitable farming in the future. In climate and environmental measures, European Parliament takes very high position compared to the Commission's proposal. I can only regret that some organizations and also the Greens and QE as part of vote this cap down movement are spreading the different kind of information concerning the vote result. For me, it is clear that the new cap greener, but also the further greener green deal proposal will take will be taken into account in strategic plans when those have been decided and voted by the European institutions. We need to remember that the main purpose uh, of the CAP is to secure safe food production in Europe and profitability for farmers. And I think we are securing these objectives together with EU's objective to tackle climate change and reach better environment. The voted Parliament's position set obligatory 30% level of funding on direct payments for agri envy climate commitments. This is a big step towards greener and environmental focused agricultural policy. I see that with this result, we will have a concrete tool to divert cap subsidies to carbon farming and nutrient recycling. I believe that this can also be a step forward towards healthier soil and better uh, water systems and seas. Even more interesting for carbon farming are the new output indicators for farming where the results will be measured. The new system for that will be built in the uh, near future. I see there an opportunity for the Baltic Sea Action Group also to bring forward your already existing inventions when member states prepare their new cap strategy plans on national level. You already have models and results how to enhance soil health and water infiltration, and this will be also key in the becoming cap. We must offer incentives for farmers to uh, change their practices while ensuring quality food and proper income. We have a possibility to act both with direct payments in first pillar and also in the rural development, second pillar, uh, where European Parliament sets a 35% level on acrine envy climate measures. Dear listeners, why the cap reform is on the table the Commission has announced in its work program for 2021 many new actions for biodiversity and land use. Early next year the Commission will publish an action plan for the development of organic production. It will be interesting to see how the action 
plan will reflect the new organic, organic legislation, which implementation has been postponed by one year. During the second quarter of next year, we will have a, a revision on land use and forestry regulation, so-called LULU-CF, and also a proposal on how to minimize the risk of deforestation and forest uh, degradation associated with products placed on the EU. I believe that agriculture and especially carbon farming will have good examples to deliver to these negotiations um, as well. And I hope that the Commission will have a future-looking approach on carbon sinks rather than looking back to history. We can also see that soil health is high on the Union's strategic agenda when we look, look at the upcoming innovation and research program Horizon Europe. Healthy soils are set as one of the five key missions of the program. I see this as a huge opportunity for carbon farming. I can only encourage the actors to actively participate in this innovation program. To our disappointment, the EU leaders decided to cut this program vital funding in the EU's next MFF. Nonetheless, uh, there will be billions of euros for research and innovation in the field of agriculture, food and natural resources that will come in need. Von der Leyen's commission has stated under the farm to fork and circular economy strategies that carbon farming will be counted as one part of the carbon removals. We have increasing need for good and concrete examples on nutrition recycle um, and soil health. And this sector, Baltic Sea Action Group, and also operators uh, such as Soil Food, as well as Finnish ministries of agriculture and environment, have worked actively as a pioneers already more than 10 years. In the next two hours, and, and well, one hour, we will hear more about what has been already done and a chance to share best practices for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Elsie, so much for the presentation. I hope I did not cut anything. No? Can you hear me, Elsie? No. Mm. Now, yes, now, thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, you can hear uh, me you now, Elsie. You can hear me now, Elsie. I'm sorry for, I'm the, sorry technical for the technical problems. problems. It's great it's we great got your presentation now, and thank you for the encouraging words to us. I could take one comment from here. Thank you, uh, Paul Lu from Four Per Mille. Uh, in the chat, he's saying that we are doing all this together as we are with the carbon action we are working closely with the four per mille and he's saying that Finland is in a good situation to inspire the countries in the same conditions. Thank you Paul for these nice words to carbon action but also uh, Paul has a question for Elsie. Uh, will the new common agricultural policy consider and promote conservation and regenerative agriculture? Yes, thank you for thank the you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Great. <laughs> thank you for the questions. Um, a short answer. Yes, it will. The issues on cons conservation and regeneration on agriculture are well taken account um, in the Annex 2, where the environmental conditionality is, is built. So I think it will be taken account. Thank you for the very clear, clear answer. Uh, I think we, the questions. I will, the, I will, rest the, the rest of the questions we have time before the closing for more discussion. For more discussion. And now we will, now uh, we will have, a have a presentation on the companies. On the companies. As Sarah and Sarah emphasized, in the, emphasized in, the in the beginning, companies are very important, are very important to us, us especially when, when we are scaling the actions. And now we are going, to, we are going to hear Juha Nosi, and he is the senior vice president of Carbon Neutral Milk Chain from Valio Dairy. And he is going to tell us about Valio's roadmap to Carbon Neutral Milk Chain by 2035. 
by 2035. Please. Please. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm, I'm extremely glad to be here and to be attending this webinar. I'm representing uh, Valio and, and Valio dairy farmers, more than 4,000 dairy farmers in, in Finland. We more or less, or very much, uh, um, share the goals of carbon action targets. And I want now to share you our roadmap to carbon uh, neutral methane by 2035. This is where the story begins. This could be a picture of my grandma. Together with my grandpa, they were carbon farmers, even though they didn't realize that. I mean the world, the world of, of carbon farming. Then the world changed. Lot, lot of new population were born, new technology, masses, machines were invented, new knowledge was learned. Things became more efficient, less hunger, more food. So, plenty of good things. The problem. Unfortunately, my grandparents' way to manage a dairy farm was at least partly forgotten. Farming on the overall became less diverse, diverse and the use of agrochemicals uh, went too far in some places and harsh chemicals and big machines also came. Fortunately, this picture is not, not from Finland. The awakening. I think it took one or more generations, a couple of generations to realize what was really happening? Now the climate change and the narrowing biodiversity have really opened our eyes in ways we haven't seen before. And the question is that can we find the perfect balance between technology and the forgotten biology? Yes. We believe we can, and we really will. Our solution is a healthy cow that eats grass. And a human who understands everything that the cow is with her microbes in the rumen, and all about the green, diverse grasslands and the healthy soils. Our goal is to cut the milk carbon footprint to zero by 2035. It's an ambitious, it's a challenging goal, but we believe it's possible to achieve. And as I said, the solution starts with cow eating grass or actually grass silos in Finnish circumstances. Here are a few of examples of our work, and also there are a lot more to come. Everything starts with a healthy soil, grassland, uh, planting carbon, and good soil management. We do, do a lot of work with uh, our side streams, mainly manure, we want to um, produce and process manure to fertilizers, to petty material, for example, 
and to biogas for vehicles, replacing fossils, for example. As a result, we are gaining much more resource efficient value chain and cost of savings in the production system. On the whole, we want to renew the food production ecosystem. There are, I have told you a couple of examples how we increase resource efficiency within uh, our value chain and while we are reducing uh, the climate impact of our production. When we do things smartly and efficiently, we also improve the livelihood of farms. And by creating new revenue streams for farms, we ensure that continued food production is possible in Finland. We have a big team. There are more than 4,000 dairy producers, about 4,000 value employees, and our international and Finnish partner network. One of them is Carbon Action and Bulk Sea Action Group. Here we have a picture of our Carbo platform uh, and we believe that we can reach our goal through efficient collaboration. Some people and their successes. We are developing in, in cooperation solutions for carbon binding on grassland. Here we have milk producer Petri Hovi from Lappeenranta measuring carbon flow on his grass, grassland fields. And researcher Aleti Astapsev, who has developed an environmental calculator, carbon calculator for farms to help to reduce the carbon footprint and improve the carbon bonds on the farms. We are turning farm manure into energy and other products. Here we have a picture from Uusitalo uh, family farm from Kanus. They have built a biogas plant next to the cow shed. And on the right hand side we have picture from of, of Petter Tafnainen from Valio, who has been the catalyst behind Valio acquiring the first biogas powered vehicles. And then next, we are developing sustainable farming practices for field, peat fields. Here we have a picture on the right hand corner. Uh, development manager Tuli Hakala and a group of researchers from Finland, Finland measuring peatland emissions last summer. Just a couple of examples of our work. Okay, does all this really make a difference, some might ask. Without doubt, our work is helping the Finnish society to achieve the challenging 2035 climate targets. But going forward, we want to revitalize the entire food sector in Europe. Now we are, for example, working in a consortium to share and spread our tools within dairy production to all of the production systems in Europe. Well, it was one of the first dairy companies in the world to announce its carbon neutrality call. And even, even if we say it, ourselves, we haven't seen as ambitious of an 
action plan anywhere else. But now we want to share what we have learned, and we, what, we are, what we are going to learn, and we want to share them even to our competitors. Thank you. Thank you, Juha, for the very clear presentation. And uh, Juha, I could ask some, there are actually a lot of no discussion, and we are going to have a final discussion, but before some questions to Juha. So relating to these questions and for your presentation, it seems that uh, you're ready to make a big sort of change in the agricultural practices if needed. Yes, uh, exactly. That's, uh, that's the idea. And we have uh, very, very big challenges ahead of us. The, the world population is growing continuously and the need of food is increasing enormously actually. And in the, in the meantime, when we are increasing our production, we need to do that with less emissions. Okay, that's a very clear answer. Thank you, Juha. And I think then it's time for, we can have some discussion together before the closing discussion. In the chat, thank you for, for everybody on the discussion, very active discussion. There is a discussion about the soil depth that, uh, for example, a question that does the minimal soil tillage, does it only increase soil carbon seen in greater depths? And there are actually already answers in the chat. And also, uh, we put a, a recent carbon action block that where are, what are we doing now in carbon action? Because we are also taking samples to one meter depth to see how, how this goes in, in the deeper soil layers. And then, uh, on to the questions, I think there's very interesting question about the farmers. The question, uh, what do you do to attribute 600 farmers signing up for the pilot instead of the planned 100 farmers? What attached, attracted the farmers to the pilot? And I think Sarah would be perfect to answer this, please. How did we attract, what do we offer for the farmers? I think we offer hope, motivation, um, profitability and some sort of um, pride of the profession. I think the farmers want to be part of the solution rather than part of the problem. And then, of course, it's an intensive professional training for them, for the pilot farmers. So it's very valuable and unique. We didn't have any uh, difficulty in getting the 100 farmers together. Do you want to continue, yeah. Yuso? Yeah, Why are you active in, <laughs> yeah. in this? Well, thank Program. you. Uh, well, uh, in the core there is knowledge, I, I think. Mm. Uh, I've seen and we've seen all that farmers are really keen on learning. They appreciate knowledge. They have more than just blinking machinery uh, or, or input-based systems or solutions. And this uh, cooperation, peer-to-peer -peer learning is, mm. is really uh, motivating for the farmers. Next question. Does somebody want to add to this answer? Yes, I think you have to yes. talk about it earlier. Yes, I, I, I could add something. When we studied um, our carbon farming training in cooperation with Baltic Sea Action Group, and, and the first group was uh, about nearly, nearly 100 people attending, it was not, not very difficult to get mm. the people together. People are really, and the farmers are really, they really want to get a new knowledge and to learn new things, all things, as I explained mm. just. Great, thank you. Uh, then we would have a question for Elsie. Do, Elsie, are you hearing us on the line? It's okay, I'm sorry. Uh, so, but maybe somebody else can answer this. I don't know, is it, let's try because it's a question that has uh, raised a lot of interest also here in the chat. It's about the net zero emissions in agriculture. Are they possible by 2035 without bringing agriculture into the ETS? If so, how? And if not, when is the latest date that it would have to be brought in by? Does somebody want to try to answer this? It was a good question. And I, I actually, we have also other comments here that is a good question saying, and, and, and how do we see the process of including agricultural carbon credits into EU ETS? 
somebody was to try to answer off we go on with the program uh, yes well, you are you're brave thank well, you I, I go for it uh, i'm not maybe considering solely the detail of this question but in in general i would like to say that uh agriculture and forestry are, are the only ones that can can sequestrate carbon and be carbon negative so if we want to be carbon neutral as a society uh, it means anyway that other branches are emitting carbon so it's our goal and task to be carbon negative you agree yes yes Thank you. And then a very nice comment from Paul Lu from, from Paul Permille. He said that we need to support farmers and really increase awareness of people about the fact that most of them are working to fight for climate change. I think we all agree. But Yari wants to still have a good comment on maybe this opinion. Yes, I just uh, want to add to this that the, like many times people think that the changes in carbon sequestration and in the in the trend of, of uh, like changing the trend of decreasing carbon stocks towards that, that they will start increasing it takes a long time but as a matter of fact it doesn't so we've we've been like in our own experiments we are seeing the see difference like after the first growing season uh, even more clearly after the second growing season and so that is it's it the changes in the agriculture systems and their carbon and the climate impact and carbon sequestration capacity can be uh, changed very quickly and that is one of the the our what, what we what we're doing with the research here is that we are developing those effective uh, uh, farming methods and then we are developing these uh, reliable verification systems in order to uh, quantify these changes and then this field observatory is also here to, to illustrate and demonstrate this to everybody how these changes are happening as we observe them so all the, this whole package is is the, our idea of research into carbon action is that the any of this development would not be slowed down because of a lack of information or poor communication of the research uh, results so that is what the research in the carbon action is about and here the uh, exactly the collaboration with our first 100 carbon farmers and the companies has been uh, of, of great great importance Okay, thank you very much for the very clear answers. And I think we have time for the final question before the closing. And I think this goes to you. So a question that what are your strategies to get carbon neutral until uh, 2030? Uh, what have you planned to implement on the farm? I think it's for you because we, I don't have a farm or neither. <laughs> so you, so okay. please. Uh, thank you. Like I just told, carbon neutrality is not enough in this situation of the environment and climate. Uh, and already our farm is carbon negative. I made some uh, modeling calculations of our current situation and ended up that we are currently uh, sequestering carbon and increasing soil carbon stock by uh, one ton of carbon so uh, per, per hectare per year. So that means that we are uh, sequestering uh, up to four tons of carbon dioxide per year per hectare and that's that's made by stacking all these uh, uh, carbon farming methods I, I presented earlier. Uh, it means diverse crop rotation, uh, organic fertilizing and, and soil improvement, cover crops. What I'm still missing uh, are, uh, I haven't integrated animals on fields yet. We do have some, some lambs on, on, on forest meadows, but uh, on the field not yet. That would uh, still boost a bit more. We have had our topsoil very fertile in past 10-15 years. It means that uh, topsoil soil carbon content is already uh, from 5 to 7 percent. Uh, I mean top 10 centimeters. And uh, now this topsoil ensures the good crops, high yields, and, and uh, healthy crops that can uh, can still put uh, carbon through uh, roots to deeper soil layers. So all these together, uh, like I mentioned, it's a very holistic uh, approach to farming. We can see uh, results very fast and the, the more in bad condition your soil is, the uh, faster we can see the results like, like Yeri told, they have already uh, 
know this this by measurements uh, and so have we done in our farm that it, it's really easy to see the, the, this uh, achievement uh, in this uh, farming in practice hope this answer thank you thank you you found very clear answer and then there's been some questions about natural packaging to Valio, but then uh, V. Pickling from Valio has been <laughs> answered in the in the chat already. So as a final question, I could take maybe more general. There has been a lot of questions and also discussion on the Twitter. And, and one underlining uh, question is that how can I get involved in carbon action? This is, of course, a very positive, a lot of positive feedback and people wanting to join us. And I think I could uh, let Sara to answer this question. It's a very nice thing that everyone has been asking how to get involved and how to get in. Welcome. It's easy to get in. You have to be committed to the uh, mission and then contact the Volksi Action Group if you want to join the company platform. If you're a farmer, join the Carbon Action Club. And then if you're a consumer or otherwise just interested in carbon action, take the um, course, e-course of the carbon action when we have, have it online. And then of course, if you're interested in research, please contact Yari, which you heard. All the contact information you can find from the website. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Sara. Very clear answer again. I think now, and thank you for the good questions, I think now it's time to end the discussion so that we have time for our very important closing uh, presentation. So we are going to have member of the parliament, Jutte Kuuteland, uh, she's a reporter for EU climate law that got ac accepted and aims to cut 65% emissions by 2030. So please, Jutte, do we have you online? I'm here. Can you hear me? Great, thank you. Great. Am I late? I'm here. Sorry? Group on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect Can you hear me? Great, Jutte. Thank Am you so much. Am I too much. late? No? Is it okay? Yes. Yeah. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you very much for this very interesting seminar. I'm sorry that I had a, uh, just in the end, I was out for one uh, second and I'm sorry if I kept you waiting, but I really enjoyed to listen to this and I'm very um, encouraged by many of the presentations. We heard today about the carbon farming is multi-beneficial and I really agree. Every year, more than 24 billion tonnes of soil disappears from tilled farming land, which is faster than the reproduction of new soil. This is not news to you, but uh, this continuous soil er erosion means that less carbon stays in the ground. And this is a big problem and a threat because we really need uh, this for becoming climate neutral in the EU. We know that the soil of this earth contains twice as much CO2 as the atmosphere and its irresponsible use of drain wetlands and careless use of soil stands for a huge potential of EU greenhouse gas emissions. I really think this seminar showed it that the carbon farming is future and it's too bad that the current cap proposal from the EU and the doesn't contain stronger conditionality to this area. But nevertheless, um, sentiments can also play a large role in the transition um, to a sustainable agriculture. And to give incentives to farmers to apply what's sometimes called the agroforestry farming could, according to the UN report of uh, 2016, contribute greatly to this. Uh, in my role in the European Parliament, um, I'm the rapporteur for the, the climate law, and we are currently negotiating this uh, during the fall with the other institutions in trilogue. And um, uh, we had a very strong report from the European Parliament to not only become climate neutral 2050 uh, at the latest, on the EU level, but also in the member states with binding target. We also got from the parliament a very strong 
uh, mandate to negotiate that we need to uh, make uh, the 2030 target stronger. We actually had 60% reduction uh, as the demand from the European Parliament. And I believe if we should reach this high ambition to 2030, but then also the overall role, this historic moment to become climate neutral, uh, the whole continent, the EU at the 2050 at the latest, then I believe we need to use all the measures that can help us in this important transition. And the agriculture is a big, important tool to change and transist into sustainable future. And then I believe we need to listen to and use all the important measures that we have also in the agriculture sector. And there, to have um, carbon soil uh, and, and make sure that we have agroforestry farming as a tool is something that we need to encourage and also politically say that uh, we would like to have incentives for. And uh, by saying that and uh, listening to what you have uh, said today, I hope that we can take this conversation into practical use and make sure that it becomes more reality uh, in, uh, in all of EU. And I would like to thank um, the Baltic Sea Action Group uh, for this interesting webinar. And I also like to thank my colleague uh, Elsa Kaitenen for um, your interesting intervention and also for hosting this. Uh, it's a privilege to listen to you and learn. And I really hope that we can contribute on this also in the future. And thank you for all the you. Uh, who listened and took part of it um, as uh, um, uh, guests on the seminar. Uh, we had a very big participation. I think that means that this subject is really uh, the future. So thank you, everyone. And it has been a privilege to listen to you. Bye. Thank you Thank so you. much, so Jute, for these very kind words, and, and we do very strongly agree. We hope to see that this is very strongly the future. Thank you so much. And now I think it's time to, to close our, our webinar. And Sara, you could tell us something very important to the end, so we remember <laughs> what we are talking about. So um, thank you for everyone for attending the seminar or webinar, and uh, remember, Soil is not only essential when we talk about climate change, but it's also essential to your health. So touch the soil whenever you can, and please enjoy and stay strong during the pandemic. Stay Thank up. you. Thank you to everybody. <laughs>